Well, a big question has been, Garrett, and to all of you, whether that law and order message is working. Uh, Shauna Thomas, the latest Quinnipiac National Poll shows us that the president's uh, attempt to inspire fear as a campaign message is not working in this poll, at least. 50 percent of the likely voters say that they feel less safe with Donald Trump as president. 42 percent of likely voters say they fear less safe with Joe Biden in charge. So address that, Shauna. Um, the messaging we've seen throughout the convention, and certainly since the convention, whereas the convention was trying at least to soften the edges of Donald Trump, since then it's been all law and order. Yeah, I mean, it, it was very clear which of the messages out of the Republican National Convention the uh, the president was going to go with, and he went with the quote-unquote law and order idea. And that is what Joe Biden was trying to, in some ways, combat any people he may lose from that by saying he's, you know, he's for security and he's for safety, but he also can walk and chew gum at the same time. I mean, I think with respect to Biden's visit to, um, to Jacob Blake's uh, hometown, to Kenosha, Wisconsin today, um, the the interesting thing about that is that he doesn't really have to do that much to to be a contrast to the president today. He basically has to say Jacob Blake's name because that was sort of the headline that came out of, of Donald Trump, of President Trump's visit. He has to do that and he has to meet with the community. Now, hopefully he will also talk about some of the policies um, that he would put forth as president. Of course, we want to hear those things. But the contrast will be pretty clear, I think. And I, I think we can't deny that because the president is the president, in some ways he gets to set the terms of the election. Um, but Joe Biden looked in that camera on Monday Day and basically said, do I look like a radical socialist? I think he is doing kind of what he has to do. And by uh, going to Wisconsin today, he is also getting some television play, which I think um, will put some of those Democratic fears you hear uh, at rest a little bit. And it may not have gotten a whole lot of notice, but one of the photo ops that the president was involved in was clearly st staged because when he was in Kenosha, he was touring the damage and he went to a, a destroyed store, you know, terribly, you know, tragic situation for that store owner. But the store owner did not want to participate, did not support the president. So he brought back a former owner of that store and posed with him in front of the wreckage there, Shauna. So it was, it was you know, pretty trumped up. No pun intended. Yeah, it, it was. It was pretty trumped up, but sometimes I see those images and what he did there and say, okay, it's it's good we are giving you more context on this show and on other shows and in pieces that I've read about how that photo op came about. But in the end, the photo of that will probably end up in a campaign ad and it will make, uh, it looks sort of like the president is standing strong against this kind of rioting and this kind of violence. And it's Joe Biden's job to say, I condemn the burning of businesses, while I can also have a conversation with the community about what brought us to this point. And then he has to say, what am I going to do as president? No, exactly right. Charlie Sykes, uh, there you are in Wisconsin and some surprising new state polls, including one from Fox News on Wisconsin, where Joe Biden is holding an eight point lead in your state up 50 to 42. That's a pretty strong lead, given everything that's happened in Kenosha. It certainly reinforces the other polling that the law and order message may not be taking hold the way the, tr the Trump campaign wants it to. No, I think it's very clear that at this point that message isn't taking hold, that he's not making uh, inroads into, the, say, the suburbs. And, and, and look, um, what you're going to see today is Joe Biden's ability to to use his superpower. If, if, uh, if Donald Trump's superpower is shamelessness, then Joe Biden's superpower is empathy. And I think that's the kind of thing that that plays well in a state like Wisconsin. Look, we're incredibly polarized. We're incredibly tribalized. Uh, the races here are always close. It is going to be close here. But I think that so far, the attempt to scare the suburban housewives or change the entrenched narrative in Wisconsin just is not working. Um, Ed Rendell, I want to talk about the polling in Pennsylvania, where, of course, you were the governor, the mayor, the the DA, I mean, you held every elective office in the state, uh, telling a very different story. Joe Biden only up four points among registered voters, and that number likely shrinks with likely voters, depending on the turnout. Uh, and there's been some smart analysis about Election Day four years ago. Uh, let me just show you 
what you said four years ago on Election Day to me about the chances of Donald Trump winning Pennsylvania. Let me say, first of all, I, I wouldn't absolutely write off Pennsylvania from Donald Trump. As I said, the turnout's good in Trump areas, the turnout's very good in Philadelphia and the Philadelphia suburbs. I don't think that, that, that Pennsylvania's over. I think Hillary's likely to win by two or three points, but I don't think it's a laugher. And anybody listening to us better get out and vote if you want Hillary Clinton to be president. So, uh, Governor Rendell, former Governor Rendell, you were spot on. You were pointing that out. At the time, I said something like, wait a second, if, if that's what you're saying, he may carry Pennsylvania. She may not win it. And you said, that's right. And, of course, it was quite a surprise because the Republican had not carried Pennsylvania since 1988. Yeah, and I think the same factors are in play right now today, Andrea. Donald Trump in polls, and I think this is true not just in Pennsylvania, but he always runs about two points better on Election Day than he does in polls, because there are some people who just won't admit to a stranger that they're voting for Donald Trump. That was the case in 16, and I believe it's the case in 2020. The key battlegrounds in this race will be the Philadelphia suburbs, where Hillary carried by 180,000 votes, but not enough to win. You just give you a frame of reference what can be done in the Philadelphia suburbs. When I ran for re-election in 2006, I carried the Philadelphia suburbs by 480,000 votes. Now, I was a local guy, and you can't expect that in a presidential election. But Joe Biden will do better than Hillary Clinton in the suburbs. The question is, can the Trump campaign bring out new Trump voters? And the one scary statistic that no one talks about is as of primary day this year, Republicans have registered 80,000 more new voters than Democrats. Now, I suspect our registration efforts over the summer have cut into that gap. But that's a scary incident, number one. And number two, the poll shows that Joe Biden isn't doing that much better than Hillary in Scranton, Wilkes-Barre, where he's a native son. I expected him to do better there. And I think he will on Election Day. But Pennsylvania is going to be off the coast. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.